<laughs> Isn't it a great day to let the country know how you feel? Yeah! You know, when I was here last year, I talked about why we were here. I want to talk a minute about who we are. Because there's a whole lot of people who are trying to tell you who you are. So today, I want you to help me tell them who we are. Paul Krugman, and I know life is too short to read Paul Krugman, but every once in a while, you know. Paul Krugman recently wrote this in the New York Times. Tea partiers are relatively affluent. And nobody is angrier these days than the very, very rich. I am so proud now to be part of the Caviar Club here. You know, in fact, that's how I found my way here. I just followed the Rolls Royce. And I knew I was in the right place. You know what's interesting about that? Now, the Tea Party movement's only been around about a year and a half. Remember when we were just toothless, gun-toting, moon-shining, drinking hillbillies? That was just last year! We've come a long way. The very, very rich. <laughs> now, we're not just the very rich, we're also racist, hate filled, homophobic, and step on baby chicks in our spare time. Now, I just added that one myself. <laughs> but it sounds like something they would say about us, doesn't it? That's who they want us to be. Oh, and we cling to our Bibles. We wouldn't have to if they weren't trying to take them away from us. <laughs> Why do they spend so much time trying to define us, and why do they keep getting it so wrong? Because their goal is marginalization. To believe that a large swath of America just wants to be left alone, to succeed or, or maybe to fail on their own, goes against everything they believe. So, I want to make it very clear right now in telling them who we are. We are Americans. They wonder why we're angry. In reality, we're not angry. We're frustrated. Peggy Noonan last year, I believe it was last year, maybe earlier this year, wrote something in the Wall Street Journal. She said, you know, the resume and the job description for Congress really isn't that tough. All America wants is from Congress, and the White House for that matter, is please don't scare the hell out of us. We're here to tell you you're scaring the hell out of us. And we want, and we want to, that to change. Now, here's what they don't know, is that, we, that this country is built on the desire to risk and achieve. The left doesn't want to realize what makes America great. In fact, they're not so sure we ever were great. They define America by her wars, and yes, she has some. Slavery, treatment of Native Americans, Jim Crow South. And they feel the only way America will ever be great is when government provides for all. We don't see it that way, do we? Because we are Americans. That's who we are. And it's frustrating the heck out of them to accept that there are so many of us. Not Hispanic Americans, not African Americans, not Native Americans, but Americans, all of us together. Now, when they couldn't marginalize us, and say there's just a handful of us, then they started lying about what we are. When they couldn't vilify us, they tried to shut us up. And you heard earlier a rule in Wisconsin that was aimed at that when they couldn't silence us. But they will continue to try to silence us. But I want you to make me this promise right now. On November 2nd, they will hear us loud and clear. Okay, that's who we are. Here's who we're not. Because we're frightened of the direction President Obama and Congress is taking the country. That doesn't make us racist. It has nothing to do with the color of his skin. It has to do with the direction that they are taking this country. 
because we believe that in this land of opportunity for everybody, regardless of race or ethnicity who comes here legally, doesn't make us racist, legally. Because we believe marriage is between one man and one woman doesn't make us hateful. Because we believe we know a hell of a lot better how to spend our money than government doesn't make us greedy. Because we're silly and actually don't think the government can run health care better than the private sector doesn't make us void of compassion. Nor does it make us radical. It has often been said America is at a crossroads. You probably hear that almost every direction. But you know, it's never been truer than it is right now. And those who believe government is at its best when it's limited have to know that this is a crucial, crucial time. There is much debate over whether the Tea Party movement is good for the conservative movement. I know this. Americans letting their voice be heard and trying to take back their country is good for America. In a little bit, you're going to be hearing from Dick Morris, and I had him on my radio show yesterday. And Dick mentioned that Wisconsin is the focal point of what's going on in November. You heard that a few minutes ago, too. We have a tremendous opportunity here. We can show America how to do this. In central Wisconsin, they can elect Sean Duffy in North, to the 7th Congressional District. In the northeast Wisconsin district of the 8th district, they can defeat Steve Kagan. 